everyone, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well and having a lovely day. So today's video is going to be my tips and tricks for how to save and be smart with your money, which I think is such an important topic. I was never taught this stuff in school, so I got into the big wide world when I was 18 and I was kind of like, oh my god, what does this mean? What does that mean? What do I do? And I really hope it's changed now. I mean, it's been a while since I was at school. So let me know if you're a younger viewer, if you do get taught this kind of stuff in school. I think it's so invaluable. Um, and I really hope that you are getting some kind of education about looking after your money. So it's no secret we recently told you that we are hoping to very soon buy our first house. Me and Ricky have achieved some of our long-term goals and dreams that we've had since we got together 10 years ago um, in that time, but this is kind of like the big one. Obviously not all of our goals and dreams revolve around money, but when you think about it, a lot of us, not all of us, but a lot of us in our future see a wedding, buying a house, having children, some of us want to go travelling or have a really amazing holiday and unfortunately all of these things which create the amazing memories that we hope to have for the rest of our lives cost a lot of money so it means making sure we're really careful with money but I'm really proud to be working with Experian on this video I have used their services for over 10 years now and I found it so so helpful in that time Experian is a website which allows you to view your credit score which shows you how companies and lenders view you if you have a very low credit score you're less likely to get something like a mortgage a car and finance a loan or even something like a phone contract and when we're 18 a lot of us get that little bit more freedom a bit more responsibility and we take out something like a small credit card or a store card a catalogue card or like I said even a phone on credit and this can actually be really beneficial to you if you pay it back at the right time every single month this shows on your credit file as being able to keep up with your payments and your credit score goes up and this can really help you in your future but on the other hand if you get things like this out you can't afford to pay them back or you miss payments payments are late this also stays on your credit file and companies will be able to see this for a long time these late and missed payments stay on your credit file for six years so what I would always say my biggest tip is to remember that Finances can be really, really stressful, especially if you get yourself in a bit of trouble, but never bury your head in the sand. That's always the worst way to handle it because things like this will always snowball. And the company would much rather, the company that you're in a bit of financial trouble with, would much rather you talk to them, be honest, and they will nine times out of 10 always be able to sort out some kind of payment plan for you. So you're paying off what you owe and you don't have that stress and that weight on your shoulders. Now you may have seen Experience recent data self campaign which is really really clever because it kind of shows how your friends and family view you and then how companies and lenders view you as your data self. Um, and yeah, like I said, this can really, really impact on your future and the things that you want to achieve. And again, people don't realise there's so much more that goes into having a good credit score. Like, for example, did you know that most of the time you need to be on the electoral roll to be approved for something big like a mortgage? Because I had to find that information out myself. Again, I never got taught that in school. And... I think that would have been really helpful to know that. So I feel like going and checking your credit score is something which is really beneficial to anyone because let's face it, all of us are going to be affected by it at some point in our lives. So it's really good to be on top of that. So I will leave a link for you to go and check out the Experian website in the description box below. So with that in mind, I wanted to share with you some of my money saving tips. Some of them are bigger, some of them are small, but they all have added up to be able to save for something big like for example, our wedding two years ago. The first one, something that I really like to do when we're saving for something big is to get a separate savings account and then name it what we're saving for. So for example, car, wedding, house, etc. Another tip, if you can afford to do so, is to set up a standing order. So that can take a certain amount of money each month automatically from your main account where your income goes into into that savings account so you don't even have to think about it you know how much a month you have to save and put into it and then you can just over time see it adding up and up and to be honest it's quite exciting and it gives you a really good feeling of achievement so another thing I like to do is sit down every few months and go through our accounts and see our incomings and outgoings and really have a look at what we're spending our money on so I like to categorize these by sort of for example bills that go out every month, um, food, 
other expenses, you can make it as detailed or as basic as you want to. And then you can really get a good idea of where your money's going. So once you've done that, I think it's a really good idea to first of all look at your bills that go out every single month and think, okay, do we need to spend money on all of these? So some of them will be obviously necessities, like for example, maybe your rent or if you've already got a mortgage or something like that, you have to pay that. There's no way you can reduce that so that's a bill that has to stay but there are other bills that maybe you don't need maybe you have a gym membership and you haven't been to that gym for the last six months get rid of it if you have a few different tv subscription accounts and you're not really watching them maybe you could get rid of them all or just keep one i don't think you should kind of restrict yourself to having nothing unless for money reasons you really really have to um, but if you can get all of that down that can really help another great tip is to contact the um, services that you have, maybe your TV provider, your broadband provider, your gas and electric, things like that. And, you know, talk to them and say that you feel maybe you're paying too much. Sometimes they'll reduce this amount. Maybe you can get a deal that they have on at the moment. There's all different things you can do. And there's loads and loads of ways that you can contact them and get your payments down a little bit. I mean, it's gonna take some work. Maybe it's gonna take a full day off of just spending on the phone, on hold, talking to people blah 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 and it's a bit of a a bit of a boring one and a bit of a chore but it could be so worth it at the end of it we also recently in the last few months did this and we could just see we were spending so much money on food it was getting to be ridiculous and we didn't need to be spending that much money so you might have seen recently we've done videos about our food shop and how we're trying to reduce what we spend um, and just finding different ways to make a week's worth of dinners but for a lesser amount we're really interested in trying to reduce our food bill because it's just not necessary to spend that much and we can still have a really good diet and way of life without spending so much money if you feel like you want to take your sort of categories, your spreadsheet, however you've done it a little bit further, I think there are some really great budgeting apps out there that you can download on your phone. Um, you can kind of get ones that link up to your bank account. Obviously, make sure they're 100% safe and genuine ones before you download anything like that. Um, but you can put information into them to um, say how much you want to spend on all different categories so that you can be a lot more in control of your money and I found these to be really really helpful in the last six months. Then you can break this down even further and start looking at the things that you spend money on elsewhere each month. So these could be a slightly more frivolous fun things like your hobbies or for me for example it could be clothing, makeup, beauty items, that kind of stuff. And you can look at it and think okay do I need to be spending this much? And if the answer is no but you still maybe have that little bit of extra income to buy those things that you enjoy and you don't want to deprive yourself too much then think okay I'm gonna still buy stuff I'm still gonna go on a little shopping spree but I'm gonna try and spend less so a good way to do that is to look for discount codes especially if you're online shopping there are loads of different websites which you can just type in the name of the store that you filled your cart up on and you'll be surprised at how many discount codes you'll find some of them don't work but every now and again you'll find like 10% 20% off and it can save you so much money especially if you're going onto a website that you've never shopped on before there's almost always a 10 or 15 percent discount code for maybe signing up to a newsletter and to me that's totally worth it to get that money off of that order also a really good tip is to check twitter because some online stores have a referral system so if someone buys something at the end of the checkout process they get a code saying use this code to refer a friend they might get 10 percent off their next order but you'll get 10 percent off your first order so go onto twitter and type in a shop that you're shopping on discount code and something might come up you never never know always give it a go and the best feeling in the world is to type that code into their discount code box and it takes the money off I know that's sad but I love that feeling <laughs> you can also try and do no spend month challenges I know you probably think that is so boring but it really does work you don't have to deprive yourself forever but you can do certain months where you don't buy any clothes or any beauty items. It might sound impossible, but again, at the end of the month, you can have a look back on everything that you've saved and all of that money that you would have spent out, you can put straight into that savings account where you're saving up for your big goal or dream. And that feeling feels incredible. So like I said, it doesn't have to be every single month and maybe try and make it in a month where there isn't Christmas or a big birthday or maybe a family or friend's wedding or something like that. Try and do it on a quieter month but it's a really good way to save you some extra pennies. Also if you have kids, 
I'm just learning as well, the cost of kids' parties goes a little bit crazy. I'm slightly worried when Archie starts school this year, he's going to be in a class of 30, so potentially 30 plus birthday parties every single year. That adds up in presents and cards and wrapping paper. So something I would suggest is buying presents in bulk. If you see a good deal, then you know a party's coming up. Maybe buy three or four of that same thing, or if they're on offer, three for two. Buy three items, even if you only need one. And then when the next party comes up, you already have something in the cupboard ready to go. The same with cards, you can just buy them in bulk. And then as well, that stops you having to run out right at the last minute all in a panic because you haven't got a five-year-old's birthday card. <laughs> and my last tip is one that I absolutely love to do, and that is sell your old stuff. I love a good boot fair. I have so much stuff ready to go for boot fairs this spring, summer, because I couldn't really do many last year, being pregnant and things like that, and just having a newborn. So I've got so much saved up. So if they're the kind of things that you think could go to a boot fair, then that's really good. I personally love doing a good boot fair, and I find them really enjoyable. If you don't like that so much, there are so many online places to sell your stuff, or um, go on social media and find your local selling sites. There's just an array of options out there, whether you need to sell big items like furniture, or smaller things like clothes. There's so many different places that you can go to do so and you can definitely, it all adds up, make a lot of extra cash to go straight into your savings pot as well. So that's all for today's video. I really hope you found it helpful and got something from it. Don't forget to go and check out Experian. I've linked them in the description box below to find out more about what they do and to check your credit score online for free. Thank you so much for watching everyone and I'll be back with another video soon. Bye guys.